Hi there, I'm Jim Zirin. Welcome back to more Conversations in the Digital Age. The 1930s were a difficult period for American intellectuals. Fascism was on the march. Refugees from Nazi persecution were unwelcome. The Great Depression cast 11 million people out of work, levels rising to nearly 25 percent. Our system of government was just not working. Many were drawn to the Communist Party. Others, like Noel Field and Alger Hiss, who happened to hold key government posts, turned to spying for the Soviet Union. Connie Martin is here. She's the author of at least eight books, including Paris, A Love Story, Hidden Power, and Enemies of the People. Her latest entitled True Believer, a riveting tale of Noel Field, Stalin's last American spy, is a bestseller on anyone's list. Cotty, we're delighted to welcome you to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, Jeff. I'm delighted to Great have to you. you. True Believer largely covers a period from 1930 to 1939, and um, uh, 1949 maybe. And uh, now, uh, what uh, led you to believe that this uh, story of Noel Field resonates? Uh, with a contemporary American life? Well, uh, sad to say, it absolutely resonates. The 30s, as now, was a period of, uh, of disenchantment with politics as usual. You had a, you had a, a generation that really had kind of given up on, on our country uh, and its ability to, to solve its problems with, with the massive uh, unemployment figures caused by the Great Depression. And, um, and, and the Soviet Union was on the march. And I make comparisons between the recruitment of, of these very bright but uh, somewhat alienated uh, young people, many of them Ivy League educated, um, including the character uh, that True Believer focuses on, uh, who were talent spotted from Moscow as, as possible agents, just the way that ISIS recruits online. This was before... Uh, the internet, but same technique and basically the same sort of person into a very violent uh, ideology in, in uh, the case of true believer, Stalinism. Obviously today it's uh, is Islamic extremism, but, uh, but the parallels abound and are frightening. We really need to pay attention to many of the things that are going on today with a, with a mind to the results in, in the 30s, with populism on the march and, and with the U.S. sort of retreating into itself as in many ways we are today. And by the way, turning its back on, uh, on refugees. Refu in, those, in the 30s, refugees from, uh, from Hitler, um, and today, of course, refugees from, um, from the, the Syrian uh, catastrophe. Uh, so there is the parallel there. What sort of person is vulnerable or was vulnerable to yeah. uh, the ideology of communism and then taking it a step further to uh, the profession of spying? Yes, because it's one thing to become a communist and quite another to betray your own government. And that betrayal is, is, is at the core of, uh, of true believer. Uh, how does a uh, well-educated, well-brought-up, uh, high wasp from uh, uh, good New England stock become um, an agent uh, for Stalin? Well, you, you have to start with, uh, with a level of alienation from his own, from his own country, his own people, um, which, which, again, the Kremlin's talent spotters were on the lookout for. So this is a man who, who aces Harvard uh, in two years, uh, lands his dream job in the State Department, uh, in the Office of Western European Affairs. And that was already um, highly appealing to, to the Kremlin 
because because uh, Stalin wanted to know how Washington would react to Hitler's rise. And so my guy, Noel Field, was recruited by an extremely talented uh, and rather seductive, right out of a Raymond Chandler novel, former actress from Vienna, who... Even the Garden of Eden. Yes, exactly, exactly. And he, he bit the apple. <laughs> and and um, then from then on, once once you once you uh, become a convert, it's very hard to walk back from that because generally you compromise yourself. And in the case of Noel Field, um, his betrayals were were massive and lucky for me. Until True Believer, were not widely known because he was as I'm sure we'll get to in this conversation, uh, kidnapped, not by the people that he was betraying, that is to say, his own government, the U.S. government, but by the people that he was serving. The Stalinists. Yes. When Stalin needed um, to, to eliminate all his perceived rivals, and by now Stalin is in a state of advanced paranoia uh, late in life, he picked this American, true blue, true believing agent of the Soviet Union, serving his master with slavish loyalty, so much so that not only does he smuggle classified documents from the State Department for, for the KGB, but he's a willing participant in an assassination of a colleague. So how do you get from from do-gooder, Harvard-educated Quaker wanting to improve the world, which is how he starts, to being an agent of one of the most violent and inhumane uh, ideologies ever. So again, the parallels with, with ISIS. Well, part of the explanation is, is the man himself. The, you ask the, the question, what makes a, a, a man or woman vulnerable to this recruitment? There, there are people, um, we see this today, who, who have a, an overwhelming need for, uh, for a powerful faith. Be, Quakers didn't provide that powerful faith. A faith that, that uh, promises to right every wrong, as communism did. On paper, it looked beautiful. Promises a, a, a utopian workers' Paradise, a leveling of all injustices, and again we have to go back to the to the to the to the the, the political uh, temper of the times at the time of rampant racism, injustice, unemployment. So all of this made made a man like Noel Field, and he was not alone, ripe for conversion to a faith that promised a, a final correction of every injustice. And and here's the thing: the 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 convert Noel Field had never even set foot in the Soviet Union. So he had no notion of how much of, of, of this sales pitch was, was spin, which it was. I mean, the Soviets invented ideological spin, but there were an awful lot of really intelligent, smart um, young men and women who, um, who bit the apple. So he was really voting against something rather than voting for something. Well, it was a combination. He, he, was, he was alienated um, from, from his own country. He, he, uh, he was a, a, a very idealistic young man who was deeply disturbed by, by the racism of the day. And, there, you know, the man is so complicated, he, which is partly what made it fun to write about, frankly, uh, was because he, he really does want to do well, he, uh, good but one of, the, uh, one of the takeaways from True Believer is that it isn't enough just to want to do good in the world. You also have to have judgment. And that Noel Field lacked almost, almost entirely to the detriment of hundreds, I would say thousands of people were ultimately led to the gallows because of, of his betrayal. But starting, first of all, with his own family. He, crushed his family. I was very lucky, uh, Jim, to have the cooperation of the surviving family members because 
they wanted answers too. This was this until now really has been has been a a, a, a giant mystery wrapped in a riddle or whatever Churchill mm. said. And a conundrum. <laughs> so uh, let's dial back to uh, his motivation, hmm. and um, he might start with his father, who was a Quaker. Uh, yes. Took him to the battlefield of uh, Verdun. Verdun. Mm -hmm. and said this must never happen again. Yes. And then his father keels over and dies of a heart attack when uh, Field is 19. Yes. Now, uh, how profound an influence was this on Huge. Uh, on he worshipped the father. The father was this, this kind of remote Victorian pater familias uh, who had moved the family to Zurich where he set up a, a biological, also a Harvard man, uh, adored by his classmates as... You know, I, I, love, I love how whenever a, a killer is unmasked, the people next door say, he was the nicest young man. People dude. conceal their true character. Yes, so this is really about how the spies among us and how, how artful they can be and how easily duped we are. If you look a certain way, if you're well-spoken, um, if you, you know, the British, the British um, really condoned um, Kim Philby and the Cambridge Five for way, way longer than they should have. Um, as as um, Noel Field had had uh, several decades betraying his country because no one could believe that such a man could be a traitor. He didn't look like anybody's idea of a traitor. So after his father's death. Um, the family moves back um, to the U.S. and he, he's enrolled at Harvard. That was the father's dream. And, and rather than finding uh, a, a country that his father had, had uh, sort of uh, spun stories of, the United States as, a, as, as you know, this young and vibrant democracy, Harvard in, in the 20s and 30s was, was not exactly an egalitarian campus. And so he's turned off massively by that. He's turned off by uh, a big trial in those days, the Sacco and Vanzetti case, a pivotal event in, in two, two Italian uh, uh, immigrants, uh, anarchists, are, are uh, sent to the electric chair on, on, on scant evidence, um, mostly because of, of class hatreds and racism and... and um, fear of anarchists. Fear of, fear of anarchists, yes. So again, parallels with today. And then, um, and then the two other historic events, which, which, which are key in my book, are the bonus marchers, uh, World War I veterans who, who invade Washington demanding their due, actually, for they, their, it's, it's, the, it's the Depression, 11 million unemployed, they can't get work, and they've been promised a bonus for their service. And, and Herbert Hoover's in the White House and he padlocks the White House gates instead of seeing them. And, and violence ensues and, and Noel Field marches with them and the alienation from his own country, his own government deepens. Then comes the Spanish Civil War, which is the first chance that the West has to stop talking about the, the threat of fascism and to actually do something about it. But the only, the only um, leader that seems to be helping um, the loyalists, the anti-Franco people, is Stalin. So he, go, he my guy, Noel Field, uh, goes to Spain where he meets many of the future leaders of the, of the Soviet satellite states to their eternal uh, chagrin because, because once Stalin uh, turns against Noel Field, he doesn't give a damn about Noel Field being a loyal uh, agent. He just needs a, uh, an American who knows all the, the communists that, that Stalin sees as potential rivals and, and uh, so has also all the people that Noel met in Spain ultimately uh, end up uh, in the dock and many of them um, uh, executed for the crime of being fieldists. I mean, it's a total sham, uh, but these, these show trials had as little to do with justice as an ISIS beheading ha has to do with justice. So not, not at so all. So Field was outed by Whitaker Chambers. Correct. Uh, as was Alger Hiss, who was a friend of Fields. Very close. It was in a different branch of Soviet intelligence. Now, right. we know 
uh, from the Venona papers, which surfaced after the war, that Hiss was a Soviet spy. And there is the, more than the Venona papers. I, I have uh, personal evidence, if I may say, because, because through a bizarre connection, uh, my parents were in the same jail. My parents were, were we were Hungarians, but they were the last um, Western um, journalists in, in, in Soviet-controlled Europe. And they became political prisoners. Yes. And, and um, bizarrely, uh, my father had the same interrogator as, as Noel. And my father's interrogator told my father and I benefit from my father's notes, uh, Noel Field had been recruited by Alger Hiss. Ultimately, the recruitment didn't succeed because, Noel, because Hiss was in the Soviet military uh, espionage unit, the GRU, and, and Field um, opted for the political, the KGB. Did so, Field give any uh, documents to the Russians oh, yes. that, that uh, were of value? Do we know what, what it was that he gave to the Russians? He, uh, yes. I, I, I did benefit from the um, briefly opened KGB archives, now under Putin, again closed. But there was a window there. And, and that's where um, Hiss's name, uh, which is oftentimes referred to by uh, various uh, <clears throat> code and pseudonyms. Such as Alice, A-L-E-S. A-L-E-S or jurist or whatever. Yeah. But here, but, but in these files, which, which I accessed, he is often uh, mistakenly, uh, it's bad tradecraft, uh, referred to as uh, Alger Hiss. Um, so there's not a shred of doubt, as, as I'm sure you agree from reading True Believer, that, that uh, Alger Hiss was uh, was guilty as charged. The the. Um, well, I had no doubt before, but uh, you underscored yeah. my conviction that Alger <laughs> well, Hiss was guilty. Well, there are still those who yes, who yes, but that's interesting. Why do members of the liberal establishment, uh, certainly at the time and continuing beyond, even after Hiss's release from prison, continue to support uh, Hiss and claim his innocence as they did Field. Partly it's because he was, quote, one of us, unquote. He was what the British would say, clubbable. Uh, he would turn up in all the right places and look the right way and, and had a house in the Hamptons, et cetera. <clears throat> um, that's, a, that's a very uh, shorthand answer to your question. Um, I think um, Joe McCarthy and Richard Nixon had much to do with right thinking, quote unquote, liberals uh, rallying to his, his side because Joe McCarthy gave such a, a black eye uh, to, to um, left of center. To be a communist became almost a badge of honor because McCarthy was such an odious um, demagogue. And, and then Nixon uh, uh, embraced the cause too, again giving Hiss a whole new shot of life because who can support McCarthy, Roy Cohn, uh, Dick Nixon, you know, these, these characters all uh, gave the, the, the pro-Hiss people a, a shot of life. But by now, um, Noel Field is, is behind the Iron Curtain, and that, that's the reason that his story has remained this mystery until now, is that he spent um, the rest of his life, which, which was 1970, um, it, behind the Iron Curtain, why? Because even though he was freed uh, well past Stalin's death when, when the gulag, the gates to the gulag opened, and by the way, I haven't yet mentioned that not only was he jailed, but his wife, who naively went looking for him. This is Herta. His, Herta. Uh, the, uh, his brother, a, a distinguished Boston-based architect, Herman. Herman. And, and last, my favorite character, the heroine of this tale, his adopted daughter, Erica, all vanish. So an entire American family vanishes behind the Iron Curtain in the, in the coldest days of the Cold War and, and uh, thought to be dead. In 1955, their interrogator, a euphemism for torturer, defects himself, uh, a, a, a really slimy uh, Polish agent named Joseph Sviatlo. The CIA unveils him in a big news conference in Washington, and he announces 
that the Field family are alive, I know because I was their interrogator. So now the State Department uh, bombards uh, the Kremlin with, with, uh, with a demand for uh, the restoration of this American family to freedom. The rest of the family hightails it out of there and, and attempts to rebuild their lives here. Five years of, of hard labor in the gulag. Uh, and in the case of, of Noel's brother in a, in a Warsaw dungeon. Um, but Noel Field is in no mood to face the music back here because he, as you noted, uh, Whitaker Chambers had unmasked him. And, uh, and after, after five years of solitary confinement, he, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to face the music. And so he asks for uh, political asylum in the country that had imprisoned him, which is beyond bizarre. And, but he's a man who is, uh, to the end, um, so blindly trusting of, of, of Stalin that the first words that he says to his poor wife, who had been in a cell just three doors down from his cell, although they didn't know that, um, have you stayed true to our cause? I mean, if that's not a measure of the fanaticism uh, and the power of faith uh, to, to just poison a mind. And to the end of his life, he continued to be a propagandist for, uh, for Stalinism, even during... Although, although the charge that Stalin leveled against him was that he was a double agent because yes. of his relationship with Alan Dulles, which yes. started at a relatively Very early young age. period. The relationship, age. the relationship to Alan Dulles is, is a kind of a thread So through. talk about that. Did you ever conclude that he might have been a double agent? Absolutely not. The opposite. This is a man who, um, um, during the war did serve um, while Bill Donovan and the OSS and, 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 and thus Alan Dulles. Because, as you well know, during the war, we were allies of the Soviet Union against, uh, against Hitler. And, but b given the uh, chaos of wartime communications, he did not, he was freelancing. Noel Field was freelancing as an OSS agent because he couldn't get a line to Moscow. It sounds bizarre, but this was before uh, sophisticated communications uh, technology. And so thinking that he was helping the cause by repatriating uh, Soviet agents from, from uh, behind Nazi lines to the Soviet Union, and the, the future Soviet bloc, thinking that he was building um, the future Soviet empire. Uh, but Stalin didn't see it that way. Stalin, A, hated and mistrusted all Western-influenced uh, communists, those who hadn't spent the war years under his watchful eye in the Kremlin, and therefore they were uh, contaminated. He, and that included people who had fought in the Spanish Civil War. Um, so, What about the, the Hitler-Stalin pact? What is it, 1941? Yes. Uh, did that, uh, that disillusion many communists? Uh, not my, not, not, my not, guy. not your guy. Not, he had an explanation for everything. It was a tactical move and, and you know, the old saw about um, uh, you have to break eggs to make an omelet. I mean, he, he excused him everything until the end of, he excused Stalin all his, his um, uh, atrocities uh, because they were all on the road to building uh, that utopia, which of course never materialized. However, uh, when my parents um, breached the, the wall that, that Noel Field had built around himself, because one of the conditions of his release from prison was that he never talked to Western media. But my parents uh, uh, were the only ones to, to, to find him and, and did the only existing interview, which, by the way, was front page New York Times to my father. My father was an Associated Press man, and that was like, wow. That oh, was boy, like are you proud the, of that one? The, the, yes. But I have it framed in my bathroom, actually, that interview. But, um, but that's, um, that's when my, my uh, parents got the full dose of the man's fanaticism, because he, he considered the Hungarian Revolution, which was 
you know, the, the, the one and only uh, popular uprising against the Soviets. He considered that to be um, an, an anti um, uh, anti-Soviet, uh, right-wing, reactionary move. I mean, the man was deeply, deeply uh, delusional and dangerous. Delusional and dangerous. Now you uh, <laughs> conclude your book with the observation, uh, and I quote, at the end, Noel Field was still a willing prisoner of an ideology that captured him when his youthful ardor ran highest. A man who set out to change the world ended up a stranger in a strange land. So I have a question for you. Uh, what, Cotty Martin, can we learn from this uh, chilling piece of history? Well, I, I think um, embedded in True Believer is a, is a, is a morality tale um, that um, we, we, we really have to um, be aware of uh, the, uh, you know, the, the sweet lad next door who, uh, who may not be exactly who he purports to be. But fortunately, we have to stop, but uh, there are spies among us. That's our takeaway, yes. or it could be. And Connie Martin has been just wonderful. Thank There's you, so much Jim. more I'd want to talk to you about, Me and too. I undoubtedly thank will. So thank you, thank you, so you for much. coming by, and thank you for coming by. Tune in next week for more Conversations in the Digital Age. I'm Jim Zirin. All the best and take care.